Welcome to the very first episode of Ecto-1 Radio. I'm Andy and I'm your host. If you are new to the podcast, welcome to Ticket Stubs and Cassette Tapes. You can go check out our regular feed if you're a... I'm sure you're not just a Ghostbusters fan. Maybe you are, but I'm sure you're not. Go check out uh, the rest of the feed. I cover classic movies. We've done some watch-alongs. I cover some new movies. So, you know, we cover some movie news. I just covered, I just did an episode on uh, CinemaCon uh, 2023. Just did some updates from that. So, yeah, go check out um, the rest of the podcast feed. If you are coming over from the regular podcast feed and you wanted to listen to the Ghostbusters show, um, thanks for joining us here. Uh, For anyone who has listened to me for any length of time on the regular show, you know, I drop a lot of Ghostbusters references. I talk about Ghostbusters a lot. There's a reason for that. And again, if you're an existing fan here of the show, you'll know that I'm a massive Ghostbusters fan. I'm a lifelong Ghostbusters fan. You know, the 1984 original Ghostbusters is my single favorite movie of all time. And for me, that's pretty big because I'm a I'm a absolute lover of movies. And, you know, I have so many tastes in movies and you know, I'm not just that guy who's going to watch just the comedies or just the actions or just the horror. I, I love a very wide range of movies, and out of all of them, hundreds or thousands or whatever, Ghostbusters stands alone for me, even above Star Wars. I'm a massive, massive Star Wars fan. But to me, this the, the 1984 Ghostbusters movie is... Um, my single favorite movie of all time. I just think it blends comedy and horror and science fiction perfectly. Um, and it just works for me. Big fan of Ghostbusters too. I'm a big fan of the real Ghostbusters, the animated show. I was kind of lukewarm on extreme Ghostbusters. Um, but it had its moments for me. Big fan of the toy line. I'm a really big fan of Ghostbusters afterlife. Again, you can check out my reviews, uh, for all three of the previous movies in uh, on, on the regular podcast feed. You'll have to go back a little bit of a ways. Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I think Ghostbusters 1 and 2 were the first three episodes I did, if that tells you how, how much of a Ghostbusters fan I am. Um, but I'm a big fan of those. And, you know, I just saw sort of always in the back of my mind, I was like, you know, I, I need a Ghostbusters show on the podcast. And right now, we are in a pretty good state with Ghostbusters. You know, we've had Afterlife, and it was a success, and, you know, the fans really love it, and that's great, and that's awesome. It's awesome that we have a Ghostbusters 3. You know, that's it's just so hard to comprehend, you know, the there is a Ghostbusters 3 and it exists and now we're getting a Ghostbusters 4. I mean, and and not only that, we're getting, you know, an animated series, an animated movie, a new comic line, uh, where we have video Ghostbusters video games out. Um, it's just, we're, we're, we're in a really good state right now. A state that quite honestly is foreign to us as Ghostbusters fans. We went for years with the franchise basically being dead, and the only, you know, life to it at all was coming from the fans and the the different teams of Ghostbusters throughout the United States, and you know, parties and, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was basically like fan fiction. It, it was essentially, um, you know, kind of. With Star Wars, like in the the late 80s, early 90s, but I think it was a little different than that because Star Wars was still such a big thing, and 
um, you know, I think we were people we were really surprised when they made the prequels or announced the prequels. But for most of my lifetime, go, uh, Star Wars has been it's been around and it's been actively, you know, putting out content, putting out, you know, whether it be animated shows or movies or what have you. Uh, toys, I mean, it, it, comics, books, I mean, Star Wars has always kind of been around. With Ghostbusters, it just wasn't that way. You know, I remember um, in, uh, in the early 2000s, you know, <laughs> searching the, the web for any Ghostbusters news, you know, whatsoever, and, you know, you would get all of these interviews or clips of Dan Aykroyd you know, making these statements like, you know, we're, we're close on, we're finishing the script on a Ghostbusters three. It's going to be coming out. We're going to be, we're going to be shooting in the fall. Um, you know, and then there'd be, you know, Oh, it fell apart. And then we're, we're writing a new one. This is going to be great. I mean, this went on for years, basically from the late nineties till 2015, I mean, that was basically what being a Ghostbusters fan was like. You would just keep hearing this stuff over and over and over. And I remember, you know, the Ghostbusters Hellbent, you know, script being a big thing and um, it leaking online and reading it. And, you know, my young, naive self thinking, man, they should make this movie. Are they going to make this movie? And actually thinking they would. Um and then, you know, in 2009, you got the video game, which was awesome. I love the video game so much. The original characters back, the voice, the voices uh, from the original actors, actresses, um, the story writing on that. It just, it felt like a, a really solid Ghostbusters 3. And I was content with that for a while. Um, and again, look, I'm kind of giving a history of Ghostbusters here, I know, but I'm just kind of, you know catching us up to speed here um if you're a ghostbusters fan a lot of this is not new to you, you know this but still uh, g give me a couple minutes here um and then we have the unfortunate passing of harold ramus and that was just you know it was devastating um as a ghostbusters fan not not just because of um you know you knew at that point that any chance of a third Ghostbusters movie just kind of went out the window right there. But also you were devastated because, you know, Egon and, and, and Harold, you know, were such a big part of, you know, the eighties and, and you know, a lot of just the, I know the fandom was really hurt by that. And it's really hard to see, you know, somebody who, you know, was essentially was one of your heroes uh, growing up it's hard to see, you know, something like that happen and somebody pass away. Um, so it just, it was, it sucked from a lot of different angles. And, and then all of a sudden, wouldn't you know it, a new Ghostbusters film is announced and legitimately announced, not just Dan Aykroyd, you know, talking. And then they say, um, you know, the film's going to be a remake. It's going to be directed by Paul Feig. Um, it's going to be starring four women. I think at that time we didn't know who the women were going to be. And then we get new, more news as we keep going. Um, we obviously have the cast announcement of um, Kristen Wiig, Melissa McCarthy, uh, Leslie Jones, and um, I always forget that. I always uh, forget the uh, the Holdsman character, the actress who played her, uh, Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon, sorry. Um, now, three out of the four of those actresses are from Saturday Night Live. I'm a big, huge Saturday Night Live fan. I grew up a huge fan of it. So I was familiar with all of those actresses. And I thought that they were all funny, especially to me, Kristen Wiig. I thought she was very good on Saturday Night Live. I had seen, you know, some of her films prior to that. I had seen some of uh, Melissa McCarthy McCarthy's films. Um, and 
I want to say at that point, uh, she had been in a couple of, I'm talking about Melissa McCarthy. She had been in a couple of Paul Feig films already. I know Bridesmaids, maybe The Heat came out before that. Um, and I don't, I don't know if there was anything else, but I, I did think they were funny. And, you know, Paul Feig, of course, uh, has a history with The Office, which is another TV show I love. And so, you know, here's the thing. I'm not a fan of remakes. I'm just not. I, I like when a world is built and an original story is built and you have history there and you, you know, with a film like Ghostbusters, you have lore I don't like and have never liked the idea of throwing all of that out of the window just to remake something, basically taking the name um, of the property and, you know, kind of just, I don't want to say remaking it in the form that it was like a shot for shot remake, but just saying, you know, we're just going to kind of remake the concept of this. I've just never seen the point in it, really, to be honest with you. If, you, if you're going to play in that world, I would rather you just play in the original world that has already been set up. But anyway, that's the decision uh, they made. Uh, the four women didn't really, it didn't bother me. Um, I, I, you know, for me, it did kind of feel just more like a little bit of a statement. You know, hey, it's going to be four women uh, just because they're women. Um, I don't mind, you know, I'm trying not to get myself in any trouble here. I I don't, I, I, to me, it just kind of felt like they were doing it to do it. But at the same time, look, being a Ghostbusters fan, I was a little concerned, but legitimately kind of excited just because we had went for so long with nothing coming out that I was like, well, you know, maybe this will be pretty good. And, and so any reservations I had about um, this movie when it was coming out, I set aside. The first trailer came out, and it it did not look good. I mean, it just didn't. Um, the humor was just very different. Um, and... The CGI didn't look great. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to... I'm, the reason I'm kind of stumbling here is I'm trying to remember a lot of things. Uh, essentially, I'm just going to boil it down to this. The movie came out. I left all my reservations at the door, went and saw the movie, and just did not enjoy it, to be honest. Just just didn't. I, I thought that the humor didn't work for me. The story, the, 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 the bad guy, the villain, didn't work for me. Uh, the CGI, I thought, looked pretty poor, um, very like early 2000s, almost Nickelodeon-ish. Um, there was just nothing about this that felt like it was in the same vein as the original Ghostbusters and what that movie was about, what it was supposed to be. This kind of just felt like an, a two-hour-long SNL skit. So I was really disappointed. I wanted the movie to be good. I wanted it to do well, and I was disappointed um, in the uh, in in how that turned out. And then at that point, I was one hundred percent sure Ghostbusters was dead. It was one hundred percent dead and buried. And you know, maybe maybe at least now there can be some peace, knowing that we don't ever have to worry about them making another one again. Let's just live in the past and. Um, just watch the first two and enjoy those in the car- cartoon show and play the games and, you know, just be happy that way. And then we get a surprise announcement, sort of a little teaser from Jason Reitman that he is indeed making his own Ghostbusters movie. A Ghostbusters 3, if you will, uh, connected back to the original universe. And there's so much excitement for that, and I'll skip a lot of stuff here just for time. The movie comes out, and to me, it is absolutely wonderful. Um, it is, is it fan servicey? Yes, it is. But it's a kind of movie that needed to be fan servicey. And if you can't understand that, then you're probably just not a Ghostbusters fan. I'll be honest. I hate to make definitive statements like that, but, you know, I know it got accused of. You know, just nostalgia and fan service. 
Um, if you listen to my review for the movie, you'll hear me talk about this and go on a little bit of a rant about it. And, you know, how I think that some of these quote unquote critics are, uh, you know, embarrassingly, um, uh, I don't know. I, I think, I think that they are, this is such a bold statement to make, but I think a lot of those people are just an embarrassment to movie fandom, you know, just in its, you know, most natural state. I think that a movie, when it comes out, you watch it and you like it or you don't and you move on. But a lot of these people go in and they just bash movies and bash movies and bash movies. Um, the fact that it ignored the remake got brought up in a lot of reviews and I'm not talking your, your mom and pop newspaper reviews. I'm talking like big, big publications, you know, the, the people that wrote for these publications, you know, made these, uh, wild outlandish, you know, statements about, you know, the, the, the social part of it and just ridiculousness. And the fact of the matter is Ghostbusters fans really loved this movie. And, um, you know, with half the budget of, you know, the 2016 remake, I think it made pretty much almost as much as the 2016 remake. And to be honest with you, after, you know, uh, digital rentals, I know it was one of the most rented movies of 2022. Um, after that, after digital purchases, after Blu-ray purchases, DVD purchases, toy sales, it probably has, I'm sure su- surpassed what the, the 20, um, 16 remake ever made. And we're talking again about a movie that had half the budget. So that's pretty good. And, and not only that, it came out when COVID was still very much a thing. And there were so many people not still not going to movie theaters. And this was a movie that was delayed for so long because of COVID. So it had a lot of uphill battles to fight. Um, but I say all that to say this. I love the movie. I was hoping they would make a sequel to it so badly. And obviously now we know they're, as we speak, in production on, on the, the, the follow-up to Afterlife. So, now that we are back to present day, sorry for that 17-minute <laughs> history lesson on Ghostbusters and, and my thoughts about it. But with this being the first episode of Ecto-1 Radio, I wanted to give you guys a background on where I stand and how I got to where I am as a Ghostbusters fan. And that was just kind of a brief synopsis on that. What I want to talk about today um, is sort of the current news, our current standing with uh, Ghostbusters Firehouse, as they are currently calling it, working title. Um... I want to talk about the news that we have so far. And I want to preface all this by saying this. I know um, that there is a spoiler photo floating floating out there from, I, I don't know if it was The Sun or it was some UK publication. There is a, a spoiler fo- photo um, from the set of the new Ghostbusters movie. If you are concerned about spoilers, listen, you're fine here. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to talk about it. I've seen the photo. Unfortunately, I I didn't have much of a, a say in the matter. It got shown to me without me knowing what it was. Um, so I know what it is, but I, I'm not going to talk about that here. I'm, I'm not going to ever talk about spoilers well, in a relative sense, you know, some people will consider certain things spoilers and some don't consider uh, those same things spoilers. Basically, what I'm going to talk about here is the stuff that's common knowledge that's coming out about the movie, and I'll talk about what's in the trailers, and that's going to be about it, okay? So, if you're worried about spoilers that we're not supposed to be hearing about, don't worry, I'm not going to I'm not gonna ruin it for you on this show, you're, you're safe here. And great thing about a podcast that's on, uh, you know, Apple Music, Spotify, whatever, 
basically that's not on YouTube is you don't have to worry about comments. So you don't have to worry about a comment section. It's just me and you here. So don't worry about it. But let's jump into a little news here. Now, some of this is going to be coming from Ghostbusters news. And I want to take just a second here to say Ghostbusters news. Jason uh, he does a fantastic job. I can't, you know, I can't give this man enough credit for, um, you know, his work on, you know, daily Ghostbusters updates. That's really hard to pull off, but he does it and he does it well. And, you know, he keeps everybody informed who's a Ghostbusters fan. Uh, go check out ghostbustersnews.com. Go check him out on YouTube. Um, you know, there's a lot of great stuff on the website, some merch, some toys, um, his YouTube channel is full of uh, really good Ghostbusters content. So, you know, this guy's been carrying the torch for a long time. And so go give him some love and check him out. The first thing I want to look at, and it's the newest piece of news we have from uh, the production of Ghostbusters Firehouse. We actually have a couple of quotes from Kumail Nanjiani. Now, for those of you who don't know, and again, if you're a Ghostbusters fan and you're here right now, you probably do know, but um, I think about a month ago, we had an announcement that uh, Kumail Nanjiani, Patton Oswalt, uh, James Ackister, and Emily Allen Lind have been cast in the new movie. Now, the first two names I just mentioned, you're probably pretty familiar with. Kumail Nanjiani has been in... You know, the Eternals, um, he had, um, he has been in, uh, uh, what is the, uh, what is the show that he's been in that's popular? I, I forget the name of that show. Um, uh, Silicon Valley, sorry, Silicon Valley. He had his own movie that came out in 2017. Uh, I think it was kind of loosely about his life, uh, titled The Big Sick, um, He's got a show out right now called Welcome to Chippendales. I mean, he's he's been around, and chances are, if you're a movie watcher, you've probably you're probably familiar with uh, Kamel Nanjiani. Oh yeah, he was in uh, Obi Wan too. He was in the Obi Wan show. Um, but he was cast. Patton Oswalt again was cast. James Ackister, I probably feel like the least of us are familiar with. Um, he's, uh, I believe a British gentleman who, um, is a comedian and then Emily Allen Lynn. The only thing I knew her from was, uh, I think the babysitter was a Netflix kind of a horror comedy movie. Hey, which is great. She's got, she's already got some experience in that world, but we just had a, um, a couple of quotes come from Kamel Nanjiani who I know, uh, if you, if you watched, the uh, YouTube series during COVID called Reunited Apart that Josh Gad hosted. They did an episode on Ghostbusters and Nanjiani, uh, Kamel Nanjiani actually sh showed up at the end of that episode, kind of telling the original cast was, you know, what a big fan he is. So it doesn't seem like it's one of those, oh, of course I'm a big fan. It kind of seems genuine that he is a big Ghostbusters fan. But a couple of quotes here, uh, starting off, uh, he says, I just love Ghostbusters, and this is my favorite movie. It's one of my favorite things that's not a person or an animal. I really couldn't believe my luck that I get to be a part of that, and the script is really good. So again, like I said, it it seems genuine that he is a Ghostbusters fan and grew up a Ghostbusters fan. Um, his second quote here when talking about the uh the the new movie Ghostbusters Firehouse he says i think it explores it makes the world a lot bigger people are going to love it because it's just this great thing where it feels new and it's going in this direction now there's a lot of uh you know there's a, it, that's a broad statement um i know it kind of sounds a little generic um but to me it is kind of interesting like um you know, I, I, I wonder what he means when he, cause this is the second time he's kind of made this statement about it makes the world a lot bigger. It grows the world. I wonder what he means by that. That is interesting to me. Um, I think I've talked about this before, but I, my speculation on Kamel Nanjiani is that I, I, I think in, in my best guesstimation, 
I think he might be playing the villain. Now, I have no indication whatsoever on that. That is just me guessing. Um, But I was sitting there thinking, you know, he's already made a statement before that his appearance, something about his appearance is different in this movie. And it makes me think, you know, could he be playing the villain? And so I've kind of... I've kind of jumped onto that theory a little bit and and stuck to it. But again, there's only so much you can read into these statements. I really just wanted to cover them because you know, this we don't have much right now. So, um, you know, anything that we have coming out of the production whatsoever is is news to talk about. And so, um I did want to cover those quotes. Um, you know, Besides the ones, the, the, the actors and the actress that I've already mentioned, of course, we're going to have McKenna Grace, Finn Wolfhard, Logan Kim, Celeste O'Connor, uh, Carrie Coon, and Paul Rudd. They're going to be back. We did have a little bit of, um, little bit of, I don't know if it was, a um, an error on, um, Ernie Hudson's part when he, he did an interview, I think, uh, last week where, you know, he was talking about making the new movie or the production of the new movie. And he talked about how great it is to have Dan Aykroyd and, or he, he, I think what his quote was, it's great to be back with Dan and Bill and Annie, um, which is, Hey, it could have just been a slip of the tongue. I don't know, but he said Dan and Bill and Annie. Now, we were all pretty sure that Dan Aykroyd was going to be a, in this movie. I mean, it's not pretty much just a given. To me, I thought there was no way Bill Murray would come back. I thought after Afterlife, he would kind of just put the Peter Venkman character to rest and move on. You know, I don't really want to get into the, the history of Bill Murray with Ghostbusters, but if you know, you know. And I kind of thought maybe he would lay it to rest. He came back because he liked Gil Kennan. He likes Jason. And he kind of wanted to be in the movie that's going to pay some tribute to Harold Ramis, given their past. And I thought that would be it. But it kind of sounds like, from what Arnie Hudson said, that he might be back. So I don't know. Let's see. It's exciting to think about. Um, you know, him being involved in any way with the movie um, is exciting to think about. So... We will see on that. But we definitely know Ernie Hudson is going to be a part of it. Um, so maybe we'll get all of the, uh, maybe we'll get all of that cast um, back. So that's really exciting to think about. One other piece of news, and it's not, we're really stretching it when we say it's news here, but um, we did have McKenna Grace um, put out a TikTok video last week where she is dressed back up in her uh, Phoebe Spengler outfit. And um, I'm not, you know, go check it out if you want to. It's on her TikTok page. Um, I actually am not even a TikTok user, so I had to see it on somebody else's or just pull, I think, pull it up uh, through the browser. But um, it's, it is, it's, I will say it's kind of cool to see her back as Phoebe. I will say she looks significantly older. <laughs> And uh, that's to be expected. Listen, the, I think Afterlife was filmed in 2019. At that time, she was, what, 12, 13 years old. Now she's like 17, maybe. That's a huge jump. You know, I mean, listen, you you all know out there, that jump from 12, 13 years old to 17, 18 years old is a huge jump in your life. You, you go from a child to an older teenager, a sort of... Uh, I would say you're sort of a pre-adult, not really a full adult, but kind of a, a young, young adult at that age. And so it's a big jump. So she does look a little different, but that's definitely uh, Phoebe. And I'm excited. I'm really excited. Again, go check out my Afterlife review. I'm not going to go into great details on how I feel about the character. But just in short here, I love the character of Phoebe. I think McKenna McKenna Grace did a phenomenal job, and I'm excited to see what she does next. One uh, other quick thing I wanted to cover right quick was we have a new um, line of collectibles coming out from um, Premium Collectibles Studio. 
Um, I am a collector. I like the toys. Um, you know, anything that comes out, I like to take a look at, see if it's something I'll be interested in adding to my collection. And I will say from the first photo we have here, they, they've made a, a, I think it's kind of a first look at the Egon character. Um, it looks really good. Now it's only a picture of like the head and the shoulder. So you don't see a whole lot, but man, the detail on this thing, it looks like Harold Ramis. I mean, you, you get a lot of these toys that come out and, uh, they just don't, you know, they don't do, they don't put a lot of work into the, the fine details, but they just try to make sure they get the jumpsuit right. And the proton pack fairly accurate. And they just call it a Ghostbusters toy. There's there's some attention to detail put into this, and it's really cool. You can go check them out, and um, I believe on their Instagram page is uh, Collect PCS. Um, the the caption on their post here for the new line says, "Who are you gonna call for a sneak peek at our upcoming Ghostbusters line? Get ready for a spectral reveal of our Egon Spangler, the first in a line of iconic Ghostbuster statues. Keep your proton pack at the ready and stay tuned for more spine tingling updates." This looks awesome, and I'm definitely going to be checking them out. Um, I know that the Sping Spengler uh, statue will be the first in the line. This is one fourth scale. It's this is really big, um, and there's no you know we don't know how many statues they're gonna release in the line, but this is really cool. So uh, again, go check this out. This listen, guys, is not a toy. This is not gonna be some you know, thing that you can go pick up at your local Walmart for, uh, you know, 40 bucks. This is going to, I mean, these are kind of high end. They're, they're, we're talking about hundreds into the thousands of dollars for these pieces. Um, that's, that's why they are so, you know, highly detailed and, and, and big. And, um, so just, just to give you a heads up, don't get too, uh, excited if you're thinking this is going to be a, you know, this is going to be, something you can just go pick up at your local toy store for a few bucks. All right. One other thing I wanted to talk about here and then we'll get into, uh, um, uh, well, not really a discussion, but no, eh, that's the best word I can come up with for now. So that's what we'll say. One other thing I wanted to say here was, um, if you listen to my CinemaCon um, podcast show, the, uh, I don't know why that sounded so weird. The episode of the podcast I just did covering CinemaCon 2023. If you listen to that, I briefly covered uh, the news that we got from uh, Jason Reitman on the production of Ghostbusters Firehouse uh, coming out of CinemaCon. Obviously, they showed a little bit of a clip of the production. No actual footage from the film or anything like that. But um, I know that we got... I want to say it's a teaser, but it's not really a teaser. Um, but just a little something out of CinemaCon uh, that featured Jason Reitman and I believe Paul Rudd. Now, this clip is not available to the public. I don't know that we'll ever see it. Um, it was only shown at the uh, event, and nobody could film it. So, you know, we're only going off what we heard. But, you know, we didn't get much out of that. You know, I, from what I've heard, it was very short. Um, it was, I'm sure it was just a little something they threw together just to have something to present for Sony, um, to show at the event. So not much there. I think the, really the, the biggest thing that came out of it was from Paul Rudd. Now, what I'm about to say here, I do not consider it a spoiler. And I know we, we just had this little discussion at the beginning of the episode, but listen, I do not consider this a spoiler, and I'm the kind of guy who hates knowing spoilers. So look, if I'm saying it, I'm just saying. I, I, I'm just saying. But I don't consider this a spoiler, okay? Um, if you have seen Ghostbusters Afterlife and you knew they were making another film, to me, this was kind of a given. But if you're the kind of person that wants to be completely clean going into the next movie... I'm giving you the spoil the quote unquote you know spoiler alert here again this is I just don't consider this a spoiler it's a very small minute thing but if if this is um something you want to stay completely clean on here's your chance to get out now or at least skip a couple of minutes ahead all right here we go 
Um, really, the only thing that came out of this was Paul Rudd and Carrie Coon seen wearing Ghostbusters jumpsuits. And I think it's kind of been confirmed that uh, they are a proper family now. And that they're going to be living in the firehouse and that they are wearing the jumpsuits because they are now Ghostbusters. To me, not a shock. Not a shock. What will be a shock to me is, or not a shock, but will what will be interesting to me is seeing who is who else is going to round out that team, right? Because um, with Phoebe, she's still really young. Trevor, I guess Trevor would probably be okay. I mean, he's got to be. I, I don't. Let's see how old Finn Wolfhard is. Just. Just for fun here. All right, he's twenty years old. I would say he'd be okay to be, and I'm sure he will be a Ghostbuster. But, um, but who else? You know, Celeste O'Connor, maybe sure. But uh, you know, who else is gonna? Is there? You know, is Phoebe gonna be one? Is Podcast gonna be one? We don't talk a lot about Podcast. I think when we talk about this new movie, mainly because we're just focusing on the family, but podcast was obviously a huge part of Afterlife, and he's going to be in the next one. He's really young. Is he going to be in a, a Ghostbuster? So that, to me, is going to be um, interesting. And look, it may not be a formal team like in the way that, um, you know... These are the these are the, the, the group of people that run out and you know, answer calls and you know, they run out and they're doing the jobs. This may be kind of like afterlife where there's not a formal team put together just yet. So we don't really know and I don't want to speculate on it too much because there could be a trailer put out a couple of months from now and it just is, you know, everything I've said has been put to waste because it gives us the proper narrative and, uh, you know, answers a lot of those questions. So we just don't know. We don't know until we know. So, um, but that is interesting to me is who, who else is going to round out that team? Excuse me here. I had to get some water. Um, so yeah, that was really the only news we had coming out of CinemaCon. Um, Ghostbusters Day is I want to say June 8th could be wrong yes June 8th that is correct um I know that they're having a celebration in New York at the firehouse it actually just got announced that the Alessi brothers are coming to perform saving the day at at the firehouse that goes Buster day that is really awesome that is really cool um I would never have expected that. I, I'm sure for those of you who are a Ghostbusters fan, you, you know that like they don't allow that song to be on streaming. I don't know if they allow any of their music to be on streaming. So it's going to be really cool to see them, uh, you know, coming to 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 play the event. My question is, the biggest thing we have coming from Sony as far as an event for Ghostbusters is Ectofest, which was, uh, you know, last year, I believe was the first, um, it was sort of the, the inaugural Ectofest. It was, it was the first ever one on the Sony lot. I, I could be wrong. Um, Let's see, Ectofest. Yes, it was the first one last year, 2022. And it took place on Ghostbusters Day. As far as I know, we've gotten no announcements on a second Ectofest on the Sony lot. Which is odd, given that I know that the 2022 Ectofest was a success... And as we sit here today, as I'm recording, it's April 30th. I mean, we're we're like a month, basically almost a month away from Ghostbusters Day. And there's nothing on that. Um, maybe 
they're going to push it back. I mean, I know that a lot of this has to do with the fact that we're in production on Firehouse right now. Um, we're still set at a December uh, release for this year, which I have been saying for a long time is not going to happen. I just don't see how it's feasible to be filming a movie in April and May uh, and release that movie in December. I, I just don't see how it's feasible. I mean, there's so much post-production that has to take place. Not only that, you've got to market the movie. I mean, um, I mentioned it on the last episode of the podcast, but um, they showed a trailer for Wonka at CinemaCon. A, a trailer for Wonka uh, starring Timothy Chalamet. Well, that movie comes out the same weekend, I believe, as Ghostbusters Firehouse is scheduled to come out. That Ghostbusters Firehouse, I don't think it's even close to having a trailer. Listen, guys, they've only been filming for a month, you know? So that shows you those two movies are scheduled to come out at the same time, but look where Wonka is and look where Ghostbusters is. Now, it could happen. It could happen. Um, but it's just doubtful to me. I don't know why at this point with us being pretty much in May, I don't understand why they haven't made any sort of update or announcement on the timeline of that. Um, I, I think at this point they probably know what they're going to do as far as the date. Maybe they're just waiting to see where they need to schedule it for next summer, if they're going to release it next summer. For those of you who don't know, next year is the uh, 40th anniversary of the release of the original movie. So you could tie in a lot of um, merchandising and things like that with the fact that it's the 40th anniversary. Um, so we'll see. I, I don't, you know, we're, we're like, like I said a while ago, we're not going to know until we know. So, um, but for my money's worth, I don't think this movie is going to come out in December. I just, again, I just don't see how it's feasible. Um, 35, 40 years ago, it was something that they could probably do. I know that. Today in filmmaking, you know, with digital filmmaking, things are a little bit easier and the process is a little faster, but you still have special effects shots. I hope that this movie takes, you know, the same course as Afterlife and we, we see a lot of practical effects. So maybe there's not a lot of special effects work that has to be done um, afterwards. But again, I mean, you're going to be filming until June at least. And then you have to have a, you know, a few months of post-production. And then typically you like to have a few months of marketing and really getting trailers out there and you know any sort of uh, product marketing you want to do, which you know they did with Afterlife, and I'm sure they're going to want to do with this movie. Um, you have to have time for all of that. And so I just don't see, you know, they were making tweaks to Afterlife not long before the movie released, even though that they sat on that movie for what almost a couple of years because of COVID, they still went back and made some changes um, after they thought they had a finished movie. And I don't know how you go from that to, all right, we're going to be doing pre-production in the fall, winter of 2022 and then we're going to shoot in spring of 2023 and the movie's going to release in December of 2023. I just don't see how you go from one extreme to the other. Um, but you know, Jason Reitman and, and Gil Kennan have mentioned they were working on this, you know, the story for this movie as far back as when they were shooting afterlife. I know they've had the idea. I know that some of the pre-production may have been done for a while, but it doesn't change the fact that you're just shooting the movie right now. And if you would have shot the movie back in the fall or the winter of 2022, um, then sure. I think December of this year would be feasible, but, uh, 
again, I just don't see it. I could be wrong. Maybe it'll come out in December and it'll be great. So we will see. I, like I said, I, I it just it's really interesting to me the lack of announcements we've had on events such as Ectofest and things like that. But I'm really excited for any event that we do have and any news that we can get coming up. Um, besides the uh, CinemaCon updates, there's not much else uh, news-wise that has come out recently. Um, we have had, if you're a, a fan of Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed, as I am, we have had some uh, pretty neat updates. I know that they've, you know, in the last little while here, they've released the real Ghostbusters um, DLCs, the the skins that you can get for the Proton Pack and the Trap and the PKE Meter. And just recently we've had the DLCs for the Extreme Ghostbusters skins that you can get. It's all very cool. I've been working very hard uh, attempting to unlock all of the real Ghostbusters equipment. Um, so I'm really enjoying the game right now. I, I would really love if they would tie stuff from the new movie um, into Spirits Unleashed as we have announcements you know, we, like I think we we got like Muncher and stuff from Afterlife and the RTV and some of that cool stuff. So I would love to see that happen for uh, the the new movie. And um, so, you know, if you're a player of uh, Spirits Unleashed, you know, we'll do a little Spirits Unleashed talk on here from time to time. So, um, you know, just uh, kind of a, a variety of Ghostbusters news here. I mentioned on our regular podcast feed that this is going to be a bi-weekly show. So as you're listening, this episode is releasing on uh, Sunday, uh, May, uh, April 30th. Excuse me. So we're going to look at Sunday, May 14th for the next episode. Uh, it's going to be bi-weekly for now. As we get closer to the release date, we'll have more and more news, you know, Ghostbusters news coming out. So I really want to do it weekly at that point, but we're going to have to wait until we ramp up with the new cycle here before we can do that. All right, guys, I think I've went long enough for this one. <laughs> I, I got more than uh, uh, my money's worth out of the first episode. But listen, guys, this has been Acto One Radio. I had a blast with this. If you're a big Ghostbusters fan, Follow us, follow the follow the podcast. We are on um, social media at Ticket Stubs and Cassette Tapes. We're on Facebook. We're at uh, on Twitter. Go give us a follow there, um, and that'll be a great way to keep up with you know announcements and uh, new episodes. Um, we're on uh, Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher. Uh, so we're on a variety of podcast host sites. Um, follow us wherever you are uh, listening. And if you would be so inclined to do so, please give us a review. And uh, I would much appreciate it. And we, if you're, hey, if you're just coming here for the Ecto-1 Radio, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Guys, thank you so much for the first episode. Thank you so much for the listen, um, and we'll uh, catch you next time.